Thank you very much, Craig Dawson. We got the equaliser. Listen, I am happy about it. I wasn't really, I think, coming into this game, I, I sensed an opportunity. I felt West Ham could go to Leicester and, and get a result. And historically, when you looked at the way that West Ham have played against Leicester City, our game plan's been spot on. And to, and to be honest, for 35 minutes, I thought West Ham were. I really did. We pressed high. We played a lot higher. The way that we use in our 4-2-3-1, those four forwards. And even Antonio, to a degree, for the first 15, 20 minutes, he kept to his job. He kept to his routine. They put pressure on the two centre-backs. And Leicester couldn't play out from it. West Ham were able to control the ball. In terms of the ball getting out of those spaces from the Leicester City centre-backs, I thought that Creswell, again, pressed high, regained possession, and West Ham looked comfortable without the ball. And of course, naturally, you, you get to the goal itself. Listen, against a team like Leicester that play a slightly higher line and where West Ham allow Leicester to have a lot of the ball, you always get the opportunity to find the outlet. You always get an opportunity to expose the higher line. And we, and we did it last season at home. Now, Diop is an interesting one. We'll get into Diop's performance later. But it's a fantastic ball. It really, really is. It's not... It's not lumped. It's it's perfectly directed. It's got decent weight on it. And of course, Jared Bowen's read the situation really, really well as well. And he did that last season. The way that he's taken the finish, I like the way that he's been able to beat players. He's still under pressure. It's still not an easy finish for Jared to put away. But again, he's hit it so well. He's hit it so low. And, and we're 1-0 up. And in, in that situation, when, you, when you're looking at the game, and listen, I don't expect West Ham to dominate the ball against Leicester. We were in control, very, very much so. Leicester were limited in terms of their chances. They were unwilling to play in mid to midfield. And credit to West Ham and Lanzini as well, playing up on, alongside Antonio. They couldn't do that. They couldn't get the ball. Tillemans was having to drop back into a back three and they weren't able to find any joy. And even when the ball's come over on the odd occasion, I felt that Diop dealt with the situation very well. He's read the situation. He's used his physicality. He's used the athleticism that he does have. And it, it felt for me a very, very similar game to what we've seen with West Ham Leicester before. Where I think it's changed, outside of the obvious penalty and, and the, the change in dynamic in terms of West Ham dealing with the, with the game, uh, for me, I, I felt West Ham lost energy in, in playing slightly further up. I felt that we were pushed deeper and deeper, or certainly we weren't as disciplined with our, our team shape. And, and you have to keep that up against Leicester for the full 90. You've really got to hurt them and you've got to squeeze them because the minute Leicester get an opportunity to start playing through the lines... Of course, the type of players, James Madison, Harvey Barnes, that causes issues down our right-hand side today. Again, they will find space and they will exploit you. And, and a couple of occasions leading up to the handball, the way they were able to get their fullbacks really high, it pinned us back and it creates opportunities for them. And we know that the type of players that they have and the overloads that they can create, it, it will naturally cause West Ham issues. So you have to keep that level up. And, and we didn't. And of course, the, the penalties is a mad... It's a mad situation, if I'm honest. I know Moyes has spoken about the type of corners that we've conceded, but I've got to be honest, I've got no idea what Cress is doing there. And listen, I love Cress and he's had a really good season, but I just for the life of me still can't kind of understand. He's obviously taken his eye off the ball. You've got to maintain concentration, you've got to keep your eyes open, and he's and he's flung his elbow up. And to be honest, I'll, I'll never really know why he's done that, and probably he won't until he comes out and see. But the, the reality is, of course, they get the goal and it helps Leicester. It helps Leicester in terms of momentum. And second half, there was a real feeling for me, two things happened tactically. One, our shape wasn't good enough in terms of pressing and we didn't maintain how high it was and, and, and stop them playing into the midfield. But secondly, to be fair to Leicester, they were able to play around. They were more aggressive in terms of playing longer balls up to their target men, up to the likes of Dakar to get the ball, Harvey Barnes. They had the ability with someone like a Tielemans that if you give him too much space, he'll be able to switch the ball from deeper areas. So they started utilising different components of the game that we haven't really seen them do in recent game weeks. And it put a lot of pressure on our back four, particularly when your midfield's already out of shape because it is slightly higher. And then and then we've seen the issues with the fullbacks and in particular Soufal. To be honest, I felt that that's probably, that Soufal has not been in good form for for a while now, in all honesty. And and this game really highlighted to me, I want to say how poor he is, but he isn't. You know, we've seen him in, in the past season or so. 1v1, Soufal, you, you bet your life in certain situations that even when he's beaten for pace, he can deal with it. But today he looks scared. He genuinely looks scared of, of Harvey Barnes and, and, and Leicester exploited our right-hand side on num numerous occasions. The fact that Soufal allowed someone like Barnes to A, travel with the ball as much as he did, but B, beat him on occasions or give him enough space to get a cross in, again, led to their second goal. And, and that's 
that's the frustration. Look, look, I'm not denying that in numerous occasions, you've got to look at the whole goal and the way that they've beaten our press and how Tielemans has switched it. Fair enough. But the truth is, Sufal has got to get closer. And I feel that he didn't because he was scared of what Barnes could do to him. And then, of course, you've got to look at Crescent and his positioning and dealing with the inside run of Pereira. But in my opinion, that only comes from the fact that West Ham were unable to maintain the shape and stop Leicester playing through. And Leicester do have quality players. Of course they do. Now, let's get on to the creativity side of things. We lack creativity at the moment, and it's so frustrating to see because the movement and the intelligence and the technical ability of some of the players that we do have, we've seen it with Bowen, and I think we see it a lot because he's obviously our man in form. Lanzini, four now, Antonio, Antonio being the big one. There has to be movement off the ball. Now, I think Antonio, for me, when you when you watch the first 10, 15 minutes of the second half, whether it's the game or not, whether you watched it on TV... He's making more of those runs in the channel. He has to be doing that more often. There has to be more from Antonio. I, I completely, uh, do you know what? I sympathise sometimes with the idea that he's not getting the service granted. But where West Ham was so successful was the movement of the front four last se- at, at the beginning of the season. Of course it was. And Antonio's ability to run in the channel and stretch and, and force lesser defenders into areas that they don't want to be to create space for others. We aren't doing that as much as I would like at the minute. And, it, and it, at the minute, it feels like it's coming down to, to moments in transition, which, of course, West Ham are fantastic at. And you've got players like Fornells and Lanzini that can play in pockets of space and pick the right passes. Then you'll always have that avenue. But there has to be more. And I think that Leicester benefited from the fact that West Ham are struggling with their creativity at the minute. And they look comfortable in sitting behind the ball and inviting pressure for West Ham. And so at the end of the day, it had to come down to a set piece for me. I don't think we had too many chances. I would have said that the introduction of Vlasic and Ben Rama could have been done earlier. And, and wherever you sit on the Antonio issue at the minute, and granted he is out of form, if you are going to try and play and press slightly higher, you've got to get energy in there. You've got, if, whether it's, I know people say about Bowen in the false nine, but if it is for energy and we know he can play in central areas, you've got that element of it. You've got Vlasic and Ben Rama. And, and I think we could have done more of that. Ben Rama changed the game to a degree because of the way that he was able to play in pockets of space to drive with the ball. It committed men. And I think West Ham needed that with a Leicester team that was sitting slightly deeper. And then, of course, you get to the, to the goal itself, which... Graham Souness and some others seem intent on, on ruling out. My understanding of the rules is if it hits anywhere here on the sleeve, it's a goal. I, I felt that it was a goal. I felt that it was a, a shoulder. Yeah, of course, there's there's a lot of contention over that point. But that's the one thing West Ham were able to do finally in that game. Use our set-piece quality, again from Jarrah Bowen, and use our threat and our aerial dominance to get a result. And we didn't see enough of that because I don't think we were creating enough chances and we weren't getting enough opportunities from set pieces. And and, that, and that's, for me, what it boils down to. Now, how do I feel about the game? I think it is a missed opportunity because ultimately Spurs have lost. The Manchester United have dropped points. But because of the way that the second half went, because of how we were struggling with, with Leicester's, I'd say Leicester's ambition, I think Leicester's intensity as well, that I think they had to perform. The crowd were on them, their form that they're in, that helped them massively. I think a point is a good result. And I think getting a point rather than a defeat is, is still big in this situation, if I'm honest. And I've got to say, credit to Issa Diop and Craig Dawson today. I thought they were fantastic. It was so hard for them because of the way that Leicester play with their fullbacks, the way that they play with inside forwards in Harvey Barnes and that we know the runs that Dakar can make and James Madison playing in the 10. It was very, very difficult, particularly when your midfield two are playing so high up. But I thought the way that they marshaled the situation, their positioning, they, there was no... They weren't overly aggressive. They kept their shape very well. And that's very hard. And I've got to be honest, that's very, very difficult to do when your fullbacks are getting pulled into areas and, and maybe you aren't quite sure as to whether you need to go and help them out. But credit to the pair of them. I thought they dealt with it well. I thought Dawson was fantastic airily. I thought Diop's reading of situations and his aggressiveness at the right time was really, really important. And at the end of the day, they do deserve praise for that. But I can understand why people are disappointed with the overall performance. I, I still think from an attacking perspective, just in terms of fluidity and, and chance creation, there has to be an improvement. Maybe that does come from the fact that West Ham, have, and, and we know Antonio has played in a number of games. I don't, I don't think that helps. I'm hoping that a week off and then against Newcastle and then more of a routine schedule will help this team out and, and give a little bit of energy where it's intended. But I think once we get that straight, and of course, I think when we deal with this this fullback, particularly with Sufa, I, I, I don't really know what to say. I, I don't particularly want to sit here and, and start digging him out. The worry for me is, is 
I don't think he's good enough in possession at the minute in terms of retaining the ball. I think that was a theme, to be fair, to some of the players today, but also defensively 1v1. And I think the calls for Ben Johnson make perfect sense, if I'm honest. And I would bring him in for Newcastle because of St. Maximan's threat, genuinely. And I think St. Maximan will look at that performance from Soufal and think, I can get out of here, I can create for somebody else and, and they'll gamble with their number eight. So I'll leave it there. A good point at the end of the day for me. Drop in the comment section what you think about the game generally. If you do enjoy this content, drop a like on the stream, video, record. Take care. Check out the Patreon account as well in the description. And of course, the West Amway website. I will try and be back for... I feel like doing a talk show this week. I feel like I might get a few of the lads on because I do think there's a lot to discuss actually with, with West Ham at the minute and some of the players. So take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm sure I'll speak soon.